Good afternoon, everyone. Bon appétit. And we already have two people that have queued in for questions. Um, I'm Dr. Theresa Tam, the Chief Public Health Officer of Canada. I'm Dr. Theresa Tam, the Chief Public Health Officer of Canada. As of right now, we have 313 cases of COVID-19 in Canada. All 10 provinces have now reported cases. Ontario saw the, single la the largest single-day increase to date. We now have four confirmed cases among the passengers repatriated from the Grand Princess or in quarantine at CFB Trenton. Canada has tested close to 25,000 individuals to date. Internationally, Europe is the epicenter of the outbreak. With cases rapidly increasing in Canada, particularly in British Columbia, Ontario, and Alberta, a window to flatten the curve of the epidemic is narrow. We all need to act now. COVID-19 is a serious public health threat. While this disease is particularly serious for older adults and medically vulnerable people, all ages are at risk. Let me be very clear. Today, I am asking everyone to take strong action to help us delay the spread of COVID-19 and protect as many people as possible. For the public, this means postpone or cancel all travel outside of Canada. That is not absolutely essential. I strongly recommend that all travelers coming from outside of Canada take the additional precaution to self-isolate for 14 days. I am also asking that you avoid large public gatherings and increase your personal physical space from others. Talk to your employer about contingencies for working from home if this becomes necessary. And I cannot stress enough, if you're at high risk of severe illness, practice social distancing and separate yourself whenever and wherever you can. Everyone else needs to make sure to take all precautions to protect those at high risk while ensuring that they are fully supported and not isolated. This is our chance right here, right now, we need to act now and act together. Thank you. Merci et bon après-midi à tous. Thank you and Je good afternoon. New, My name is Dr. Howard New, and I am the Deputy Chief actuelle, Public Health Officer. At this point, we have 313 cases of COVID-19 in Canada. All provinces. Uh, 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 um, all provinces have now Ontario identified cases. The highest uh, single increase uh, in one day was in Ontario. We now have four confirmed cases of people who were repatriated from the Grand Princess ship or were quarantined at CFP Trenton. Canada has tested 25,000 people up until now. Internationally, Europe is now the epicenter of the epidemic. With cases rapidly increasing in Canada, particularly in British Columbia, Ontario, and Alberta, our window is narrowing in order to uh, mitigate the spread. We all have to take action now. COVID-19 is a serious public health threat. Although this uh, disease is particularly serious for older individuals and vulnerable, vulnerable people, everyone is at risk. Today, we are asking everyone to take strong action to help us to delay the spread of COVID-19 and to protect as many people as possible. For the public, that means postponing or cancelling all travel outside Canada that is not absolutely essential. We are also recommending that all travelers coming in from abroad self-isolate for 14 days. We are also asking you to avoid large gatherings and to increase your personal space in relation to others. Speak to your employer about working from home if necessary. And we cannot insist enough on the fact that if you are at risk, please practice social distancing and 
Always separate yourself from others where you can. We, everyone else must take all the necessary precautions to protect uh, people at high risk, while at the same time making sure that they are supported and not isolated. This is our chance. We have to act now and act together. Thank you. Merci, Dr. Tam. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, New. Uh, we will now open the floor and the telephone line to questions. Uh, we'll go with the first reporter on the room, and then we'll go to the phone. Good afternoon. Stephanie Levitz from the Canadian Press. Quebec took the stand today to ban all large public gatherings, to shut down pretty much every public space, limit restaurants. Are you suggesting that other provinces follow suit? But that is, uh, of course, up to different individuals. I have just met with all the chief medical officers of health. And I can just say that they're all considering these types of measures. And we discussed, um, you know, for example, consider that all mass gatherings or all gatherings, 250 persons or, or over, uh, should be postponed or canceled. These are some of the really key things that they're all actually thinking through right now. Should the government close the border? So right now, we, as you probably have heard, that uh, as of Friday, we ask that um, people don't go um, outside of Canada unless it's absolutely essential, and that when you come back, you self-isolate. We have to maintain essential uh, movement of people and services as well. And I think that the key for every country in the world, it is a global uh, response, that they need to essentially contain the outbreak within their own setting. But it is very important to maintain um, um, really essential um, services and uh, goods and movement of people. The border, though, become mandatory, and should self-isolation become mandatory, given what we know about the sort of moving hotspot of this virus? As, as you um, actually said, that essentially um, almost the vast majority of the world has reported um, at least some cases of covid 19. So our measures must be broad, which is why we are asking that all travelers who come back self-isolate. This is not um, essentially ordered. This is a voluntary self-isolation. It is impossible to be essentially keeping tabs on every single traveler that come in. This is a social phenomenon. This is a societal response, and everybody must take that responsibility. Public health is going to do what it can. It cannot be essentially maintaining that kind of um, um, linkage, if you like, surveillance and daily monitoring that we'll be intensively doing for different areas of hotspots. Is now everything. Every traveler should self-isolate. One more question in the room, and then we'll go on the phone. If you have any questions on the phone, please, please press star 1. Une dernière question dans la salle, et puis nous irons au téléphone. Si vous avez des questions, appuyez sur étoile 1. Testing at the moment seems to still be linked to those who have traveled from a hotspot or have sort of known contact. At what point does that expand to just starting to test people if they present with the symptoms but have not traveled? Uh, reports coming from overseas seem to suggest that many people, for example, can be asymptomatic and still be transmitting the virus. This is already happening now. So as I've said, Canada has tested more people per capita than, than, than so many other countries. So over 25,000 or uh, around 25,000 people have already been tested. The testing criteria in the provinces is broader than travelers. So clinicians can make their own flexible judgment as to who they should test. But certainly testing uh, people who are hospitalized, who are seriously ill, no matter whether they've traveled or not, is one of these key measures. Long-term care facilities, for example, and uh, are particularly important. We want to protect those who are sick. So any outbreak that looks like uh, influenza or COVID-19-like symptoms, we don't really regard whether there's a travel history or not, for example, that they, people should be testing for those um, um, types of presentations. So there must be a flexibility afforded uh, to clinicians to be able to test um, anyone that they suspect may have COVID-19. But certainly specific jurisdictions uh, do have their protocols, but uh, it, it, the, the net has been casted wider than just tra travelers. Operator, uh, let's go on the phone. 
Thank you. Merci. Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, nous allons maintenant passer à la période de questions. We will now take questions from the telephone lines. If you have a question and you are using a speakerphone, please lift your handset before dialing your selection. Si vous avez une question et vous utilisez un téléphone mail libre, s'il vous plaît, soulevez le combiné avant d'effectuer votre sélection. Si vous désirez poser une question, appuyez sur les touches étoile 1 de votre clavier téléphonique. If you have a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad, and you may cancel your question if you wish by dialing the pound sign. Vous pouvez annuler votre question si vous voulez en appuyant sur le dièse. S'il vous plaît, demandez seulement une question et une question suivante. Please restrict yourself to one question and one follow-up question. S'il vous plaît, appuyez sur l'étoile maintenant, sur l'étoile 1 maintenant pour poser une question. Please press star 1 at this time if you have a question. And the first question is from Marika Walsh. La première question vient de Marika Walsh à Globe and Mail. À vous la parole. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you. I'm wondering if you can explain clearly what information travelers arriving in Canada are getting. We're hearing constantly all weekend that they're not being told to self-isolate. So please tell us what they are being told specifically. So this is, um, as everybody can appreciate, a rapidly evolving situation. So we will be using many different channels to get the message out for returning travelers from outside of Canada um, to um, self-isolate. And we are rapidly updating all of these uh, messaging, including at airports. Right now, you may not see that message as yet. We are, uh, we, prior to this, we've been asking everybody to self-monitor. That message is changing now to self-isolate. And so we appreciate all journalists and reporters to get this message out for us as well. Thank you. The message, though, on Friday was to self-isolate if you were returning from Canada. So why was that not given at the borders? Uh, that is rapidly being implemented right now. That is absolutely true. Very important. Thank you. Merci. The question suivant vient de. The next question is from Jim Keller at Globe and Mail. A vous la parole. Please go ahead. What do you know about the number of ventilators currently in Canada across the country and our ability to scale that up if uh, the need increases? So this is type of planning is um, underway very much in real time in the various jurisdictions, and that is in the jurisdiction of the provinces and territories. But based on my um, connections with all the chief medical officers of health, I know that all of that planning is going on. What we are facilitating at the federal level is to provide um, surge capacity or to uh, assist with purchasing of equipment uh, should they be needed. So I do know that things like ventilators, uh, personal protective equipment like masks and, and gloves and such, hand sanitizers and uh, laboratory uh, type testing equipment or you know swabs, those are all part of the uh, federally facilitated, coordinated uh, purchasing um, uh, mechanism. Thank you. Merci. The next question is from the question suivant vient de Annie Bergeron Olive at CTV News. À vous la parole. Please go ahead. Hi. We're cutting out. I beg your pardon. Annie Bergeron Olive, please go ahead. Your line is now open. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. I'm hoping you can just tell me and clarify, if somebody does get COVID-19, how long should they self-isolate and how long does some individual remain contagious? There were some reports today that potentially the virus lives within you for up to 37 days. So um, obviously the science is rapidly evolving, uh, but we do know um, that um, really persons with symptoms are the most infectious. Um, in the most jurisdictions, um, we are still testing uh, for people who are COVID-19 positive um, with a, a negative test at the end uh, to determine if they uh, still have a positive um, test detection. Now that policy could change because we now know based on science that people are most likely to be infectious 
with it, if you have mild illness, so that these are people staying at home, if you have mild illness, that it may be around eight days since the symptom onset uh, that you remain infectious. That, that science is still evolving. And I think jurisdictions may still be testing people at the end of the um, clinical uh, period, but that may or may not be necessary depending on uh, the evolving science. So for sure, if you're symptomatic, you have to uh, uh, self-isolate at home if you have mild illness. Of course, if you have more severe illness, call ahead to your health line, health provider, in order to be seen uh, and potentially be hospitalized. I think those who are hospitalized will be isolated in the hospital until they're uh, essentially discharged. Uh, as a follow-up, uh, the way I understand it is in Ontario, if you have recently traveled and have come down with symptoms, or if you have come in contact with somebody who has been confirmed with COVID-19, you cannot actually get tested. You're told not to come in and get tested and to stay home and isolate. In that case, for somebody who has not been allowed to get tested and is at home with symptoms, that perhaps is not bad enough to be hospitalized. How long should they remain at home to be comfortable knowing that they will not transmit uh, the COVID-19 to somebody else? Because in that instance, they probably wouldn't be able to get a negative test because they haven't had a test in the first place. Yes, so that is actually um, part of the evolving science. I think on the conservative side, uh, if you have symptoms and maybe you're not tested, for sure you should never venture out if you're symptomatic, even with mild symptoms. Uh, if you want to sort of be really cautious, um, again, maybe even thinking about 14 days, that is probably precautionary for someone who has mild symptoms, but um, that, that length of period will be evaluated as well. Thank you. The next question is from Raisa Patel at CBC Politics. The question suivante vient de Raisa Patel at CBC Politics. À vous la parole. Please go ahead. So I have a question about airport screening specifically. Travelers are telling us that they're only being asked on a screen whether they have traveled to Iran, Italy, or China, and that's when further screening measures will take place. Why are travelers not being asked if they have traveled anywhere else, given that we are now in a global pandemic? I think that's precisely why we're asking all travelers now um, to voluntarily uh, self-isolate. It is it, it's basically every traveler from outside of Canada. We are still currently maintaining uh, additional uh, screening question on those um, machines, the immigration machines. Uh, for now, for the three areas that you just mentioned, Italy, Iran, and Hebei. That can be constantly re-evaluated. But now you're no longer just focusing on these three areas. You're actually focusing on all travelers from outside of Canada. And I think that what you will see is that we're rapidly ramping up the communication on that front. These uh, media briefings are just but one channel we will be making sure that we have those messages out at all points of entry. And at what point can travelers expect to see updated questions on those screens when they're coming into the country? Um, the, all of those planning implementation things are um, in, in planning, right? We're, everyone's working really hard at doing that. But just to add, though, that um, those, those machines are picking out people from just three areas. It, that, that question may and may not become relevant anymore when you have everybody that needs to um, pick up the self-isolation knowledge and information sheet. That's what we are planning to do. Thank you. Merci. The question suivante vient de. The next question is from Guillaume Saint-Pierre at Journal de Montréal. Please go ahead. À vous la parole. Um, bonjour. Um, le gouvernement du, uh, du Québec a dit Quebec tout à l'heure que ce serait une, une bonne idée de bloquer la frontière pour touristes to, uh, pour contenir um, la pandémie, non pas um, évidemment uh, les, les marchandises ou les, uh, les citoyens canadiens, mais aux touristes to étrangers, aux visiteurs étrangers. Uh, quelle est votre position uh, sur ce sujet? 
À l'échelle technique, on continue à travailler Technically, étroitement we continue avec nos homologues to work very closely with our counterparts, counterparts uh, in avec the province of Quebec, Dr. Uh, Arruda. Uh, on sait que and les, les mesures qu'on met à, à la frontière, c'est une composante d'une approche intégrée avec, aussi, integrated avec approach aussi un système intégré de soins de santé, santé publique pour, uh, pour, uh, pour uh, dépister, détecter uh, rapidement les cas uh, au Canada aussi. Uh, Canada. Uh, uh, isoler aussi à uh, faire also, un suivi des contacts. Uh, isolate people uh, on sait que and do les, les voyageurs tracing. peuvent uh, rentrer au Canada sans symptômes. Donc, uh, uh, ce qu'on fait à, à la frontière, ce n'est so pas uh, une garantie pour uh, empêcher l'introduction du virus au Canada. Donc, il faut aussi garder la, la frontière also, aussi uh, ouverte pour les services essentiels. C'est ça ce qu'on discute actuellement parce que uh, pour la, la fourniture aussi, le transport des personnes, c'est des services essentiels. Uh, to people. So we have to ensure that those essential services are covered. Um, donc, pour vous, um, so vous for the time being, de, de you do not believe that there is any need to de, limit de, de the number of international travelers coming efficace. into Canada. Pour, uh, Do you believe that this contrer, could be uh, an effective uh, measure? Well, that is part actuelle, of the discussions that are ongoing now. But what we're saying is that it is more important than our borders to provide proper information to people, to all travelers entering, uh, into, entering uh, Canada. Uh, Uh, important pour tous les And voyageurs we de have also que said that all travelers must uh, know de, de de, de that they should self-isolate for 14 days uh, upon arriving in Canada. Pour se réveiller pour les symptômes. Merci. Merci. La question suivante vient de. The next question is from Brian Mullen at Global National News. À vous la parole. Please go ahead. Hello. Um, following up on what Premier uh, Legault announced yesterday, is it time to declare a national public health emergency, and what would that allow the government to do? I think we, um, right at the outset of knowing about COVID-19, uh, we have been, the whole, whole of the country's public health system, and now many other departments, not just health, have been um, responding and preparing Uh, for this public health um, uh, emergency or a pandemic, if you like, that WHO has declared. So we ha actually have been responding to it as such. And so um, some of the other sort of declarations that you've seen in other countries are for them to seek additional authorities, um, which could be financial, at least at the federal level. Uh, we already have the necessary tools and mechanisms and authorities to obtain Uh, the kind of uh, funding and um, other authorities um, that we we need, as you've seen the announcements from um, last week. So, um, so, so that uh, is not necessary at this point in the Canadian context, but we're certainly evaluating the situation. Uh, right now, as, um, um, as we know it, most of our cases are still uh, linked to travel and their close contacts. But that situation could change very quickly, and so we will be evaluating this uh, on a um, you know hour by hour, day by day basis. Thank you. And from a health perspective, would re reducing domestic and international air travel help contain the spread? Should airlines consider limiting flights within Canada and from outside Canada? So I think um, we are essentially messaging today to everybody in Canada. And that includes um, you know, an anybody who works in Canada as well as anybody who is living in Canada to practice social distancing. So some of these concepts can be applied uh, to travel as well. So the idea of being able to um, sort of maintain social distancing, especially if you're in a high-risk group, I think should be thought of carefully uh, even in the domestic context. So avoiding uh, crowded spaces, mass gatherings, Uh, as such, um, should be considered when you're looking at uh, the traveling context as well. Thank you. Merci. There are no further questions registered at the moment. Nous n'avons pas de questions pour le moment. J'aimerais maintenant retourner la parole à M. Morissette. So I would like to turn the meeting back over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, one last question in the room. Une dernière question dans la salle. Respecting what you said about sort of increased signage going up at the border, um, 
and you know the need to to keep essential people and goods moving but why not close the border i mean knowing everything we know why not say tourists are no, can no longer come here and just shut it down what's the science telling you about that so the science um, at the moment if you look at the global epidemiology to date and there's actually some studies to this effect that countries that have enacted travel bans, for example, have not been able to keep out this particular virus. And you can probably see some of these countries um, at, as, you, as you look at uh, what's happening in, in different places in the world. And so I think that we are driven by the scientific uh, knowledge as of this point. Uh, but what is really, really important to make sure that the whole society, our health systems, are prepared to detect rapidly um, to, um, we're still um, looking at contact tracing and be able to break all chains of transmission in Canada. The, the front and border is but one layer of protection and it's never perfect. Uh, you can get people coming in in different ways as well. And I think uh, what the science is telling us and the publications on which countries have been impacted the most, some of them have actually been the ones with the most stringent uh, travel and border measures. I wonder then if you could just reflect on the science and the data sort of coming up against public perception and politics and how the two things seem to be butting heads right now where people are hoarding toilet paper and stockpiling when yourself, the Prime Minister, is saying, you know, the supply chain is fine. H how, does, how should Canadians really be managing all of this? They're panicked. They're very scared. So I think um, everyone can play the part. And so I, I think that I do want people to know that this is a serious illness. That's for sure. But that everybody can contribute to what we call flattening that epidemic curve. You do not want this disease transmitted rapidly. Whatever you can do to decelerate that transmission and to break those chains of transmission is really important. We can do something about this now. By these social distancing measures and, and avoiding non-essential uh, gatherings or travel, we can dampen any sort of uh, transmission within our society, which is the most important thing to do right now. And so, um, while this is a serious illness, we want people to act. You can do something about it. And by acting, by increasing your knowledge, you're going to reduce that level of uncertainty and anxiety. So I think that all Canadians can do something about this and protect those who are most at risk and vulnerable. We really, really want to stress that. Make sure you do not transmit anything um, to your grandparents, to long-term care facilities, to hospitals. It's those kind of settings that, based on the evidence so far, can really, really impact a country. If we can do that, we can limit those kind of spread, we will really be able to reduce uh, the level of um, severity and impact to this country. So really, my message today is we have a chance right here, right now, we all do our part, act together in solidarity, and um, everybody uh, take the necessary precautions and uh, heed the advice of um, self-isolation, for example, if you've traveled outside of Canada. Thank you. Thank you. That will be all for today's uh, press briefing. Any additional questions can be directed to the Public Health Agency of Canada's Media Relations at 613-957-957. 2983. La séance est maintenant terminée. On vous remercie de votre participation. Si vous, vous avez d'autres questions, n'hésitez pas à communiquer avec le Bureau des relations avec les médias de l'Agence de la santé du public du Canada au 613-957-2983.